so no forests on flat earth let's uh, let's just dive right in shall we for me the whole guts of that video really starts with the peculiar issue of the columnar basalts and that's what i'd like to focus on a little bit here because i think that this point about the basalt columns is really what drives the entire premise of all the claims about giant tree stumps and ancient abandoned quarries and all the rest uh, I'll say right up front that I was too I was pretty intrigued by the matter of the basalt columns, and I, I think practically everyone who stops and thinks about it for just even a mere few seconds easily recognizes that the official explanation uh, about these rock formations being caused by the cooling of lava flows under specific conditions is is just pretty laughable. Uh, it's pretty simple to see that this is actually yet another example of ridiculous geological pseudoscience uh, based entirely on evolutionary presuppositions. So, you know, this, this is what really grabs the viewer initially, as you realize that the maker of this video has keyed in on a, another example of the outright lies of modern scientism. And so then the viewer's attention is pulled in even further when the example of Devil's Tower is shown. Uh, with its super tall columns and the way it actually flares out at the bottom. I mean, it it's really is impossible to deny that when you look at its shape, it absolutely does resemble a massive tree stump. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I, I mean, there's no way that this was formed by the cooled lava from inside a volcano that has since been eroded away. And then, of course, he goes on to show how the hexagonal patterns are found throughout nature as a part of living tissues and even in the cross-section of specific plants and uh, moving on to things like Giant's Causeway in Ireland and seeing how the same hexagonal patterns are found in the basalt there. And so uh, the implication is that then this also must be the remains of another ancient, ancient tree. But honestly, that was the point of the video where suddenly the zetetic analysis and scientific verification suddenly seemed to be tossed by the wayside, and uh, instead of going into more investigation of the many known locations of columnar basalt, which are found all over the world, and you know, looking to see if there's other ways to determine if they might be the remains of massive petrified trees, the, the author instead simply starts showing you side-by-side -side comparisons of photos of uh, mountains and mesas with photos of tree stumps. And those mountains and mesas are, for the most part, not made of columnar basalt. So, what happened to the basalt? Why is it suddenly not central to the entire investigation anymore? And that's what really perplexed me. Um, I mean, I spent the whole day just looking into the, the subject of uh, columnar basalt and looking at photos and reading. And I even started to remember how driving across eastern Washington state, you can actually see it scattered in the cliff sides all over the place. And, uh, and I mean, as it turns out, it's... There's a pretty solid business involved in the harvesting of basalt columns and turning them into sculpture pieces and fountains and things. So it's it's not a super rare geological phenomenon. It's actually so abundant that it's it's not even under any legal protections as far as uh, pr preservation is concerned. But in the video No Forest on Flat Earth, he suddenly makes this sudden leap from talking about the very odd aspects of columnar basalt to then just showing you a picture of, say, Ayers Rock in Australia and contending that this is the stump of a giant felled tree. So what I wonder is why it appears that scores of people somehow missed this very crucial point about the whole presentation. And from there, it just honestly launches into the completely unsubstantiated assertions about all the mountain ranges and gorges, such as the Grand Canyon and such, being uh, really the abandoned ancient quarries of either some race of ancient giants or the mining machines of some advanced ancient civilization, or, you know, maybe both. So the second half of the video basically just involves taking aerial photographs of the mountains and mesas and canyons and, and claiming that the whole Earth is, in fact, basically the discarded remains of some massive industrialized uh, project of environmental plunder sometime in the distant past. So needless to say, I did not find that component anywhere near as compelling as the first part dealing with the columnar basalt.
So hopefully that gives you a brief snapshot of my initial reaction. And just to be clear, um, I'm, I'm actually not balking at the idea of the possibility of ancient gargantuan trees. I just believe that before actually coming to such a conclusion, there's far more analysis that has to be done uh, in a very uh, composed and methodical way. I mean, it's a fantastic lead to follow up on for sure, but that's that's really all it is right now. It's It's a lead, a series of compelling questions that deserve further inquiry. I don't see it as a full-blown revelation, not even close. But for me, this is what really starts to, to beg the question, um, and that is, why are so many people who've spent so much time and energy into methodically examining the hundreds of Flat Earth-related questions um, so ready to, to just jump on board with such an elaborate Flat Earth origin story, and, and that's basically what this is. Uh, you know, based off of a single video. I mean, honestly, isn't that exactly the sort of thing that so many of the naysayers have accused Flat Earthers of already? Of not being scientific or rational, but simply jumping onto some sensationalized conspiracy bandwagon because we watched some single video on YouTube? So what gives? Please hear me, I'm not calling the guy a shill or a plant or saying that there's a, a psyop or whatever else. I'm, I'm not doubting that this, this Russian fellow truly believes in the theories that he's proposing, so... Please know I'm not trying to bash the guy or question his motives or anything like that, but... Also, as a, as a flat earther who is a firm believer in the Bible, um, the word of God, of course, has to be the measure of all truth, and this is where I see the uh, ancient trees theory, as I guess we can call it, uh, it just doesn't seem to find much backing in the scripture either, and definitely not in the way that Flat Earth does. Now, I do know that a lot of people are pointing to things like Daniel 4, with the dream involving the giant tree that was brought low, which was a prophetic description of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, and I, I kind of wondered about that too, but in the end it's a piece of symbolism in a dream. So to, to take that and to try and extrapolate it into this elaborate claim about the existence of literal forests of trees of that size is, is really a bit too much of a stretch, I, I think. You would need a lot more verses in other places to corroborate that, and I just don't see them. I did also think about the, uh, the recurring mention in the Bible of the famous, almost uh, legendary Cedars of Lebanon, Wondering if perhaps all those references might perhaps be alluding to something that actually may have gone, you know, far beyond the, the land of just Lebanon, but it may be describing something far more grand than the, the cedars that we conventionally think of uh, now as modern cedar trees. But again, after chewing on that for a while, I have to say that if we're really trying to be true to a literal interpretation of the Bible, then this would not enable us to inject our own meaning into the established words like cedar or Lebanon or, or anything. And speaking of biblical literalism, another thing I thought about was the, the flood account in Genesis where it says that the flood waters covered the tops of the mountains. It does not talk about the flood covering the tops of the massive giant trees, or the flood being the thing which perhaps knocked all the trees down, nor does it talk about the waters covering up massive tree stumps, and etc. I mean, it just doesn't. And again, if the ancient peoples who passed down the oral history of things like the flood event also knew about the antediluvian existence of massive trees taller than mountains, well, they would have had no difficulty at all in articulating such a thing. I mean, they had a word for tree stump, <laughs> we can be sure of that. And they had words for big, too. So, again, I've been looking for it, but I'm not seeing anything. Personally, I have no aversion to the idea of there being massive ancient trees back in Noah's day. In fact, I admit it sounds pretty cool. But I'm not going to start believing something just because it sounds like a cool concept. But this is what is really interesting to me about all this. Uh, the question is to why this idea is so cool in our imaginations. Like, why is the notion of ancient lost trees something that seems to resonate with us on an almost, like, subconscious, even spiritual level? And again, if we go to the Bible, I think the answer to this is pretty easily found. I 
I mean, the Bible does speak of ancient primordial trees of immense spiritual significance in existence at the beginning of creation, but their significance is not described in terms of their sheer size, but rather in terms of what their functions were in relation to mankind. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Bible describes these ancient trees as being central to the original plan of life in the Garden of Eden and central to the provision for free will. When Adam and Eve sinned, they were cast out of the garden and no longer had access to the tree of life. However, the Bible also describes the tree of life being seen once again in the New Jerusalem after the resurrection and final judgment. Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter in, in the Bible says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, water as clear as crystal, pouring out from the throne of God and of the Lamb, flowing down in the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river is the tree of life, producing twelve kinds of fruit every month of the year. Its leaves are for the healing of the nations, and there will no longer be any curse, and the throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city. So, really, the underlying narrative of the whole ancient trees theory is found in the, the video No Forest on Flat Earth is, is actually a lot more in line with the Gnostic mindset, with the general idea being that the once majestic and pristine state of creation was defiled, but not by the simple act of humanity's disobedience to God, but as the result of the malicious actions of some nefarious group of giants or advanced ancient humans or, or whoever. So it's, it's really quite similar to how a lot of people stance today on, on the New World Order uh, powers where the, you know, basically all the big problems of the world are, are blamed on one specific group or, or many groups, you know, identified as, as the quote, bad guys. And instead of what the Bible says about how all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So anyhow, on the, on the one hand, I, I found it all very interesting, especially when it comes to the specifics of the very mysterious basalt columns and the Devil's Tower. Uh, but honestly, the way the whole thing just exploded into this frenzy of conspiratorial speculation has, <laughs> has actually felt quite similar to something like the whole Pyramids on Mars meme, you know, which itself began with a very small piece of uh, anomalous information. In, in that case, it was an alleged photo of the surface of Mars with a shape looking like a pyramid, but, you know, countless people have taken that and just ran with it in all kinds of directions according to you know, whatever conceptions of ancient galactic civilizations their imaginations might entertain. So is this basically what we're seeing happen here? Is this just a pyramids on Mars for flat earthers? I think we have to at least be open to that possibility and be cautious in uh, our reflection upon these ideas. I'm absolutely fascinated by uh, the prospect of exploring what things like Devil's Tower and Giant's Causeway and all these other, and all these numerous deposits of columnar basalts uh, might actually be, and maybe they are, the bases of ancient trees, but yeah, the whole the whole idea that the Grand Canyon is just a giant quarry and that the mountains were, were just, you know, leftovers of some mining operation, I think just really, it's really just, it, like, like I said, a very unsubstantiated leap um, without the, the type of zetetic verification that would be required of such a claim. So, there we go. Thanks for listening.